Okay, what's going on, guys? And welcome to a brand new episode of Energize, brought to you by Forged Dyer Stout. Ross, are you intoxicated or something? <laughs> Introduce the guest, man. Today we have the biggest star of Bellator Belfast. He's one of the biggest stars the organization has to offer. It's the one and only shrub animal. It's James Gallagher. James, welcome home to Ireland. Thanks very much, boys. It's good to be on. It's good to be on. The Jimmy Great Show is on the Energize Show, baby. <laughs> ah, he's a funny con. <laughs> I love it, Jimmy. I love it. Jimmy, uh, tell us this. We might as well start, start off with that. Uh, you made the move out to Bang Tao. T- uh, it looks like it's going great over there. We constantly see you pop up with a few Irish heads over there as well. Uh, yeah. half, the, half the MMA country seems to be over there. Uh, tell us this. How did the move come about and what's the best part about it? Is it, is it the weather? Is it the lifestyle? What made you make the move? Bads at all. Do you know what I mean? It's fucking, as you can see, I'm sitting here fucking with a hoodie on. Trying to stay warm and nice, you know. It's where over there you wake up in the morning, you pull on your shorts and your slides, and off you go. Do you know what I mean? So it's just it's it's paradise for training, uh, especially with the cal- caliber of coaches that you've got there, and then the the lifestyle. Do you know what I mean? It's absolutely. I, I can't wait to go back. Do you know what I mean? But there's just nothing like home either, boys. Is there nothing that deep? And when you get off the plane, the 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 first breath of fresh air you get. Yeah, when the rain it. hits you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, I don't miss that part. I don't miss that part. <laughs> oh, oh, stop. And then, uh, obviously, James, um, maybe things might have seemed up in the air, air at the start of the year for you because, obviously, you know, PFL have bought Bellator. Um, they're sort of running them coincide at the moment. Uh, I think the Bellator Belfast show is PFL presents Bellator Belfast. Uh, when PFL bought Bellator... What way did that put you contractually and are you delighted to remain with, with the sort of co-promotion or whatever way you want to put it these days? Yeah, no, it didn't, uh, it didn't affect me at all. Contract stays the same. Uh, so the contract just rolls over. Do you know what I mean? So uh, now it's been all smooth at, at my end. Uh, everything has been seamlessly. It's kind of like, and even now with the fight coming up, it's it's pretty straightforward and pretty smooth. And nah, man, it's been great. Uh, so it is the, the transition. But concerning the start, when no one, no, even the belt or people didn't know what was going on, mm. that was a bit like, oh, fuck, what's going on here kind of job. Do you know what I mean? They'd be, uh, mm. What's the deal with contracts? Are they going to cut us and then sign us and try and renegotiate? Or, or, or what's the deal? Do you know what I mean? So nah, man, I'm happy. Uh, everything's rolled over and get the opportunity to fight in Belfast. Do you know what I mean? Got a good fight, and I'm I'm, I'm happy out. Right? Yeah, no, we're we're absolutely buzzing to see you perform at Bellator Belfast. But James, before we get into that fight, uh, we want to discuss your win at Bellator two ninety eight against James Gonzalez. How good did it feel to get back into the cage and get your arm raised again? Ah, uh, man, it's fucking quality. I wasn't too happy with my performance. You know what I mean? But I did what I had to do, and uh, do you know what I mean? I played it safe, pulled out the safe card kind of thing, and and just got the win. Do you know what I mean? But uh. I'm looking forward to walking out here next week and just being back myself. Do you know what I mean? I'm back in the win calm. I'm walking in there a winner. I'm walking in there back feeling myself. Do you know what I mean? So I can put that swag back on the end of the shots and stuff. Do you know what I mean? And start to advance and rather than just just trying to get the win. Yeah, it, it, what's it called? It, it was great to see you get the hand raised because uh, I, I know you've been moving all over the place and like the camp you're with over in the States and stuff like, you know, um, with James Krause, there was uh, you know a bit of controversy with him and stuff like that. So things things went a bit all over the shop for you. But uh, look, you you came out the better man on the night, and you know we expect nothing less come uh, Bellator Belfast as well. Uh, tell us about the opponent change. Obviously, you were supposed to fight Jeremy Kennedy. It was a number one contender fight. It was it, it doesn't get too often or announced too often that like on the poster it says number one contender fight. Then he got bumped up for a title fight. Now you're fighting the, an old adversary in uh, Leandro Higo. Uh, mm-hmm. Tell us how the opponent change came. And is this a number one contender fight? Yeah, this is number one title contender fight. Uh, that's what they have told me. That uh, I'll get the shot at the belt after I win this one. Um, so it just came around. exclusive. 
Uh, I don't know if it's exclusive. I, I know it a few weeks ago when they told me, so I don't know who the fuck knows. You know what I mean? I don't know. My, <laughs> I, don't know. I think everyone knows now. I know. No, you see, cunts know, so the whole place will know as well. So <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we won't tell anyone. It's we'll not keep it quiet. Exclusive for much longer, is it? <laughs> Nobody's allowed to tell anyone. That's an exclusive here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't I have a clue to be honest. They nah, uh, they told me that I'll get the title shot after this one. So. It came around when Pitbull's opponent pulled out, so they were, you know what I mean? So he was kind of fucked, but Jeremy was next in line, so that it kind of makes sense. Do you know what I mean? They, they can't go find someone else for Pitbull when Jeremy was next in line and I hadn't fought, you know what I mean? Like they can't put me in there, can they? Well, they can do whatever the fuck they want, but it just wouldn't make sense. They kind of put me in there or anything, do you know what I mean? Just coming after the back of my wind, do you know what I mean? And another one, so. It made sense for me to fight Higo and for because he goes fucking Pitbull's looking for a fight, so it's like give me Higo, let Jeremy fight your man, then give me the winner. Yeah, you know? and tell us this: uh, there's been a bit back and forth uh, over the years with Leandro Higo. Where did the beef stem from? From fucking the stupid cunt that rolls around me. He wears more stupid glasses than you wear. What do you call him? Captain <laughs> 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 you know, your wee fellow walks around with the big uh, white glasses that so who do made an absolute mockery Captain of? Captain Eric. Yeah, 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 yeah. Him it came came from him. So he he's the guy that speaks for all these boys. So this is the reason because when you actually speak to Hego and Pitbull and all them boys, they're they're, they're top lads. So they are. So now <laughs> Sorry, but fucking Captain America over here, he's fucking an Egypt, so he, he's the fella that runs the mouth for them boys, thinking it's funny, but what he does then is gets himself in trouble, because when they get translated what he's saying, and they get told it, and they're going, yo, he's he's a user, user speaking out like this, and they're like, we didn't fucking say that, that was him, <laughs> do you know what I mean, so uh, he, he he's putting them in the situations. Is, is this case of he's writing checks that his fighters can't cash? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> One person who's going to cash a check is definitely James Gallagher on March 22nd yeah. against Leandro Higo. And then there's going to be a title shot next, James. James, is there an ideal place you'd want to fight for the title? Absolutely, mate, in the three arena. The three arena. June. Three arena in June 20. Just June 20, is it June? There's, there's your second exclusive, Baz. 20 to June. I'm, I'm not down there. <laughs> I don't know the date. 22nd of June, Bellator, Dublin. Perfect, let's go. Yeah. You know yeah, we mean? have it, there we have it. 22nd, I get my sh- I get solidify myself for the shot, and June 22nd, I win the belt. James, you're giving us all the exclusives here. I wonder if people <laughs> are going to report that they listen to it on the Energize show, Ross, will they? <laughs> nah, nah, they, they, don't, they don't give us two, two, two ages with the glasses, any credit for anything, but that's, that's a different story. <laughs> 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 but uh, J- James, uh, tell us this. Obviously, you fought over in the states. You're victorious, but I-, I feel like we get a different James Gallagher in front of the Irish crowd. I feel, I feel like, you know, when all all the bright lights are on you and the all the attention turns to the Jimmy Show, that's when we see you shine brightest. One hundred percent. I can't wait for that feeling again. Do you know what I mean? Even now, being home and walking around my hometown and stuff. Do you know what I mean? I get feeling that energy again and I'm looking forward to bringing it in there with me and March 22nd and and that's what it is I carry the energy from the crowd in there with me and it just makes me feel it's just different do you know what I mean not that I love fighting I mean then that I love fighting and stuff but when you fight here it's just special do you know what I mean and it's kind of one of these it's like a, it was for me it's happened a lot but they're kind of like once in a lifetime moments mm. Do you know what I mean? And I, and I just keep seem to keep getting them. And I'm just very grateful that it, it's another opportunity for me to get one of those moments again. And I'm looking forward to going and doing it. James, would you have more people support you in in the like in the tree rain in Dublin or would you have more in the SSE in Belfast? I don't know. Do you know what I mean? It's the same, same, same. I feel it's only up the road. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's- hour and a half drive so i don't feel like it's going to make much of a difference you know what i mean but uh either spot the three arena the sse i'm happy i'm, I'm good you know what i mean so uh I, li- I like belfast belfast is a nice place you know what i mean i'll be up there a lot and and uh i like belfast it's just not getting around the city is a lot easier than dublin and stuff but uh you just can't beat the three arena either yeah J- don't James, worry about it. The Gallagher gang will be out in force. Oh, 100 percent Like James, just over the last couple of years, like you seem to have like like obviously really matured 
Um, you, you haven't seemed to be doing, be doing as, as much press, but like you seem to be in a really good place now. Yeah, like what sort of in your life has changed recently over the last couple of years? I just have the he's so there's a lot, fucking a lot, that's for sure. But uh, no, you just uh, after you go through a lot of stuff that's kind of out of your control and it's not the best kind of stuff. You learn just to appreciate the good times, and when the good times come, you make the fucking most of it, mate. So that's just what I'm doing. Do you know what I mean? I've got my head done. I'm working hard. And I've got a dream to chase, and I know what I got to do to go and get it. And it's, I'm doing it. Do you know what I mean? So I can't ask for too much more for myself. And I'm just enjoying every time. I'm enjoying all the good times and dealing with the bad times, and just preparing for what's to come. And mm-hmm. when when I just keep the head down, keep working hard in the gym, and uh, it seems that the good times just keep getting better. But I've just gone through a lot of personal stuff in the last couple of years, and a lot of switches, a lot of big moves, and a lot of stuff that it's a lot of stuff that's happened. It's kind of how can I word this? But like a lot of stuff that's kind of out of my control. Mm. It's handed on my plate that I've just had to kind of deal with, and it's been annoying and and whatever. But once you get over it and you just focus on all the good stuff, then you just can't help being you know, thriving. And that's what people once you're thriving, it's people can see that. Do you know what I mean? They can see the work you're putting in. They can see the energy that you're putting out, and uh, and that's just what you're seeing. Do you know what I mean? I've got my head in a good place and standing in the gym and working hard and progressing the way I should be. Yeah, no, that's that's great to hear that you're. You're coming through and you're ready to perform again at Bellator Belfast. And uh, Ross, it's crazy to think that like James has actually been in the game so long and he's only 27. That's now. Yeah. Yeah. You probably achieve more than most would ever dream of. And like, it feels like you're only getting started. I feel, I feel like we're only starting to see yeah. you know, a fuller package of James Gallagher where you've put everything together. Yeah, I feel like this is my uh, second like run at it. Mm. But- experience do you know what I mean it's kind of like not that of a second run at it but like kind of like I feel like I'm almost my last one was just getting me to this one and then now this one's gonna give it the tile mm. shot and I feel like it's my second little run at it but I'm more mature I've got my head screwed on I don't got stuff for people in my way trying to take me away from it do you know what I mean mm. so I'm just here grinding and uh, really very very focused and uh and ready for the challenges ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Obviously, you know, you're training a bit far away from home. How nice is it to get back to Straban and see your mom and dad? And how grounding is that? Ah, it's the best, man. Do you know what I mean? And that's the thing. I've been very grounded over the last the last few years. So it's just been, do you know what I mean? I've had my head down no matter where I have or what's going on. I've been mm. very grounded. But when you come back, it's kind of like you don't got to be as grounded because they have got lots of good people around me. got mm. my mom and dad. And, my brother and they got everyone here, do you know what I mean? That that's around me, so it's it, it's easy. They they help me a lot, so I don't gotta be as grounded in myself because I got so much help. Do you mm. know what I mean? A bit of a the stress off the brain, which is nice. Uh, uh, and saying that that you do uh, tra- uh, train that bit far further away than uh, normal for this fight. Uh, tell us this: who's gonna be in your corner come fight night? Uh, George Hickman, Connor McBride, and uh, as always, Big Daddy Keith. <laughs> <laughs> you up the kefir. You up the kefir. The, mo- the most terrifying man in Irish than me. <laughs> right now. So he's come down to finish off the last the last bit bit of training. Happy days. And hopefully we see Kiefer back in in, in the Oxygon soon. Uh can't wait yeah. to see him uh, get back in there as well because uh Australia on short notice isn't isn't nice. <laughs> well, that's for sure. Someone knows how to that don't know it's like travel to extra Australia, but I've done some in fucking long ass flights. Trust me, <laughs> it's not fun. Yeah. It's not fun. <laughs> yeah, I think you'd know something about that, James. Uh, uh, James, just speaking, like you were saying that you want to fight for the title in Dublin in June. Like when you just look over the next, the next like maybe year or two, like how active do you want to be with Bellator or potentially even with PFL? I want to be going every f- four months. That's why I would like to fight every four or 45 months. I think it's perfect. So let's keep the ball rolling. Let's, let's get it done. Do you know what I mean? Just go a month to recover, another couple months training camp, and then go again. And, keep that yeah, and uh, see, the way, like, see the way like Bellator and PFL have been doing competitions or tournaments. Like, if, do, you, do you like that style, or do you just prefer knowing that you just have a fight? 
Nah, I would like the tournament because it kind of, you know what I mean, it's four fights over one year, which is, it's a hard push, but it's a hard push for one year, do you know what I mean? It keeps you locked in and then you can take six months off if you want. And a million yeah. in the bank. <laughs> yeah, that, that would go far, far in Thailand, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> depends. Depends who's spending it, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Ja- James, just looking at the Bellator Belfast card as well. Bar your own fight. What other fight in the card are you actually really looking forward to seeing? Pitbull versus Jeremy Kennedy. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one where my eyes are locked in. Yeah, okay, okay, absolutely. Okay, yeah. You know what I mean? Like you have to, you have to keep an eye on on the division and and see what's up. So, uh, will, will we be seeing a, a James got her face off with the winner afterwards in the cage? Is probably I don't know. Probably I haven't been. It's a great idea I just had. Bellator definitely rob it and go with it. Yeah, yeah. But since he's organized, and I might just bounce over myself and see what's. <laughs> yeah, you can bounce a bounce a can of forge Irish stay off his head. Cream you stay in the game. Are you mad? Wouldn't waste a good forge Irish to start off the Hong Kong. <laughs> <laughs> <I'll sit laughs> <and freak> <laughs> okay, throw the empty can on his head. Throw <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. the empty can. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're not, you have to be serious. This is meant to be a serious interview. <laughs> yeah, we're always very serious. That's that's why we have glasses. Yeah, how can you be serious? You used to. <laughs> uh, I, I I don't know. I actually don't know. But uh, James, like you're obviously very busy. You're going to be doing a ton of media. I'm sure you're probably going to be the most interviewed person in the build up to the event. Yeah, Is there anything you want to say to the people in the build up to Bellator Belfast? Tune into the Jimmy Show. It's going to be the best one yet. So it isn't going to come out here very calculated, very f- uh, focused, and the. Uh, and we take this guy's head off. It's gonna be an it's gonna be an entertaining show, that's for sure. A few little little things I got in the pipeline, you know what I mean? For the walkout and whatever else going on. So it's good. And remember to the people that are all coming that you're not allowed flags into the venue. The security's gonna search you going in, so he's gotta put them somewhere somewhere safe where they're not gonna take them off you. Yes. <laughs> well, we're gonna have to hide <laughs> the glasses. We're gonna have to, <laughs> we're gonna have to put the glasses in it and it kind of fours our stout. Yeah, hundred percent. You know what I mean. I remember the last time there was a uh, people putting them in the inside of their coats, you know, from one sleeve to the other. <laughs> so it is. So heads up. Uh, we get creative, the old Irish do. When 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 you're told you can't have something, it makes you want it even more. But uh, it, it's going to be an incredible night. Uh, I don't know what the ticket sales are like, but I definitely recommend getting them sooner rather than later because uh, it's very rare that a Jimmy show doesn't sell out. So uh, yeah. get on it. Do you do you have a ticket link or anything, James? Or uh, yeah. Hold on, take it, master. I just let everyone bother away at that. So, yeah. it gives me a, sees me fucking counting all this numbers and how much you're owed and that or whatever. Do you know what I mean? So, I leave it all to the, the other guys that are not maybe is getting paid as much or whatever. They can get a few quid off them and whatever. They get commission or whatever. So, just on ticket, master. Happy days, happy days. Look at that, the Jimmy Show, charitable man. Send send people to other fighters links to get them get them a few <laughs> extra quid in their back pocket. What a guy! What a guy! Yeah, so make sure to check out James versus Higo on Friday, March twenty second. This is one not to be missed. And James then to to headline Bellator Dublin in June for the title. That's uh, that's the the predictions here, lads. Yeah, yeah, exclusives. You're breaking exclusives on here. Yeah, there's actually too many exclusives. <laughs> but uh, James, we want to thank you very much for your time. Right, best of skill on March twenty second, and we'll let you get on the rest of your day, bud. Thanks very much, boys. Good to see you again. All right. So Ross, that was the Jimmy Show, bro. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, always great to have James Gallagher on. Uh, always entertaining to talk to. And look, he's someone that people want to see. He's a real captivating figure in the sport. And look, he, he seems to, he seems to be in a better place than I've ever seen him before. So hopefully that will translate come fight night. Yeah, no, it was cool to get him on. Like we tried to get him on before when he was in Thailand and just the time differences. So mm. uh, we we waited till now. And yeah, it was good to have him on. He doesn't do that much press. Like out, like just. In the build-up to fights, like like he's he's flat to the map, but uh, no, that's why it was cool to get him on. And then uh, yeah. for the people tuning in, like, honored. we are honored. Like the, one of the first people to slay the the glasses, man. He's obviously jealous. We're gonna have to give him a pair. Yeah, he's just looking for a pair. That's it. <laughs> um, yeah, but um, if you are enjoying the show, make sure to like and subscribe. We have another very special guest coming on shortly. But Ross, what do you make of the Bellator Belfast card overall now? I think. 
there's some great fights on the card. I really like the main card. I think uh, it's quite good. Again, like I know we had Nathan Kelly on, and like I've given out saying like the third fight of the night. I think he should be higher up on the card. I still think that like I think like Stephen Hill is fighting Jordan Newman two fights ahead of him. Like I don't think any of the Irish fans are chomping at the bit to see that one. No offense to, to those two guys, but uh, yeah, I think uh, there's a bit of. I, I think if they actually made a few positional changes on the card, I think it, it, it could be next to perfect. Uh, great to see young Nathan Kelly um, on the card as well, o- opening up in an amateur bout. Uh, I think that's definitely interesting. But uh, yeah, it's it's one of the best cards Bellator put together and sent over in a long time, I would say. Yeah, do you think Snake Haven is going to get in the card in the end? I sort of think she won't. I, I think if they can remake the Liam McCourt fight for June, I'd be all over that. Now, obviously, that might be different for her because, obviously, then she's waiting for June to get paid, which isn't probably a, a, as ideal. But uh, if they can remake the McCourt Kavanaugh fight in June, that is an unbelievable co-main event. Yeah, and that card is going down next Friday. So uh, it's definitely not one to be missed. No, uh, definitely not. Ross, like, later on, obviously, we're going to get into what happened over the weekend at UC 299. Yeah, um, absolutely. We're also, we're also gonna have to discuss the AJ versus Ngannou fight as well. <laughs> oh, I think I called that perfectly last week, didn't I? No, nah, you never call it right. Um, then uh, <laughs> uh, we're gonna have to look at what happened at Clan Wars as well because that was a huge event up in Belfast and uh, PFL Paris. Yeah, so uh, this show, this show will get very interesting as the show goes on, and obviously, we have to discuss the Energize questions. Oh, always, always, always a bit of controversy around the end of Joe's questions. <laughs> I think people just love sending in the, the juiciest questions. Yeah, pe- people, they, want they want to, uh, people want to get answers off things that, like, they, they, want to, they want to cause us trouble. That's what they want. Yeah, they want us to get in trouble. They want us to be cancelled, man. Yeah. I think 2024 is our year to get cancelled. Yeah, it has to be, it has to be. So, Ross, there's another big event happening as well. Cage Warriors 170 in Dublin on April 6th. And we're going to have to bring on a guest who's competing on that show. It's the one and only. It's Mr. Jordan O'Neill. Jordan, welcome to the show, bud. Yes, lads. Good to be on. Great to have you on, Jumbo. Uh, making the Cage Warriors debut April 6th. Um, now fighting out of Fight Academy Ireland as well. How much are you mm-hmm. buzzing for this fight? And we've seen you getting the hard rounds in. How's training going up there? Unbelievable. Unbelievable is the only word for it. Uh Best I've ever felt. I know everybody says that in the lead up to that fight, but this is, if you ask anybody around me, they'll tell you it's the best I've looked, the best I feel. Um, I'm a different man coming into that case this time. And that's a fact. Uh, I can't wait to show that. Everything's just going to be shown on the night. It's going to be brilliant. We can't wait for it either. The thing is, you were originally meant to make your debut on Cage, your pro debut on Cage Wars against Paddy McCurry as well. So like yeah. <laughs> now now you're now you're currently two and zero and you're making your Cage Wars debut. Like what what's yeah. it like now being part of FAI and like also like being a teammate with Paddy as well? Fantastic. It's it's uh it's what needed to happen. Um, as you can see, the pull of talent up there. Pat and Shando are world class coaches. Um, you know, and I just had a you have to you have to you have to make a move where where you need to go. You know. But uh, no disrespect to my, my previous coaches, like if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be where I'm at today as well. So massive respect to Kieran and uh, Big Rodney. Still huge respect for both of them. So, But Pat and Shando is just taking me to that next level. Um, and again, it's going to show. It's going to show. It's starting to show already in training. Massive improvements, you know. So I just can't wait for the future. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, well- you didn't ask. You didn't ask Pat and Chandler to put you on the Ultimate Fighter as well to go with Pat. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> didn't get the shirt. Didn't get the shirt. <laughs> uh, well, may, maybe three or four more fights and uh, an opportunity like that will come for you. But uh, mm-hmm. I was actually talking to uh, Reese McKee as well there uh, during the week, uh, and he was saying that uh, you're looking very impressive, and he's he's excited for your Cage Warriors debut as well. So uh, all eyes will, will will be on you come April six. Um, yeah. This. Um, were you delighted to get the opportunity to fight again with the promotion? Uh, obviously, the first year debut, you had to pull out with, with, with an injury, but are you delighted to be back on, on Cage Warriors? Of course, of course. Um, I'm a big believer in everything happens for a reason. Mm. Um, and that, that can't be more true in this scenario. I'm supposed to fight Paddy, hurt my knee, things fell through. I think I needed a couple, a couple of fights outside of Cage Warriors, 
to be honest. Um, I know I'm in the best shape, best like mentally as well. Like I would you know, I wasn't in my previous career. I wasn't I wasn't where I should be mentally for a fight. But uh, in the last four months, I'm 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 set. I'm set now, and again, everything's just falling into place. And cage wires now is the right time, and I can go and make a run now in cage wires. Like I'm going on here, and I'm going to demolish this boy in a round, maybe two if he's lucky. Mm. Um, and then it's it's just after that belt, I'm coming straight through every single one of them, and I mean that. And I can I can I'm going to run through every one of them. There's nobody in that division that's going to stop me. Nobody. There's no good nothing for me. Jordan, just before we go, we, we like dive into your fight at one seven. You said things have sort of changed over the last four months. What exactly has changed? Um, I went and done. I wanted to give us a shout out tonight, to be honest, because uh, it's my way of sort of giving a wee bit back to it. I done ayahuasca uh, just after, just before Christmas, and it completely changed my life. To be honest, boys, it's the uh, best thing I've ever done in my life. It's oh, where where best did you do it? Uh, I was down south somewhere. If anybody wants to know the details, just DM me and I'll, uh, I'll give you a shout. But uh, I, it was a bad way. Um, just bad, like really drinking all the time and, you know, just felt like shit the whole time, you know. So my friend took this for me, thank God, and went and done it. And I'm a completely different, different man. It's helped everything. It's helped my relationships. It's helped me, my life. And obviously, I buy a byproduct of that. It's helped my training, and it's helped me a bit be a better fighter. So, thank God for ayahuasca. So, anybody that's been through a hard time, um, just know that that's an option. There's an option there for you, and uh, I would recommend it for anybody that's dealt with a bit of trauma or anything like anything like that. So, yeah, I'm, well, I'm sorry to hear you. that you were in a, a dark space, but it's great to hear now that you're you're feeling great. And then I'm sure Ross will be straight in the DMs after this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, like obviously, uh, it's it's probably not the most conventional method, but like it seems to have worked very, very much uh, well for you. Is this something that you do once and you feel better, or is this something that you'd see yourself recurrently do? Um, I don't really feel the need to do it again, to be honest. Um, if you do, by all means, you can. I just felt like I got everything I needed out of it. Um, I let go of a lot of shit that I was holding on to, um, a lot of guilt and a lot of. Just shit in the basement, and uh, I, I, feel, I, I genuinely, for the first time in a long time, I feel genuinely happy, genuinely content, and just different. Just I feel different. I, I have no need for any external substances or anything to make me feel like I'm numbing anything or feel happy or any, any of that shit. I just feel content and happy, and I'm focused. Is the main thing. I'm focused on winning this world title, and I'm, and I've always said I believed in myself, but. Now it's a different type of belief. Like I know for a fact that I'm going to be a cage warrior world champion, and then she so just know what, what happens next after that. Well, what, Jordan, what actually oh, gives you what's, what actually gives you that belief now that you will become a world champion now as well? I just I just know I can look at that cage warrior division and what are they going to do? Like what 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 way are they going to beat me? Seriously, I know it's easy to watch me fight, and especially them last fights, like. I'm I'm not even lying, I swear. I look back at them face and I'm thinking, it's not the same person. It's coming now. I'm telling you, it's they're gonna get a big shock when they're standing in front of me and they can't do nothing with me. So that's that's where the belief comes from. I'm uh, just I'm gonna... I, I love to hear that confidence, but one thing I hope that we don't see too much of change is that fighting style, because that fighting style <laughs> is absolutely electric, Jordan. Like you, you don't take a step back, you give no quarter. You know what I mean? Like your hands are absolutely electric. And then I always feel like people underestimate your ground game, but like off your back, you've yeah. been exceptional in your amateur career and the start of your pro career. Yeah, tie that in with you no know, Shandos. See that beast that you see? He's taming that. He, like I, I, everybody knows I'll walk forward and I'll, I'll, I'll take a slap to, to give five or six. But Shandos working on taming that and, and not giving that slap. And, you know, why let the person help me? You know what I mean? Walk them down. And be in position to demolish them at any time. And then you've got Pat, which is okay, I'm, I'm okay off my back, but why do I have to go to my back? Do you know what I mean? Pat's, going to, Pat's working with me, the wrestling, it's, it's just going to change everything and just makes it easier for me to dictate what happens on there. You know, so what we're going to see is like goes. MVP style on the feet, really elusive, and then like 
So, man, Ben Askren double legs in here. That's what we're going to see. <laughs> <laughs> Just watch, watch out for the flying knee. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Paddy's been teaching me that one. <laughs> George, he George, said your face, your face was for you before, but now, now he's teaching you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jordan, you're facing Francisco Mazzano, uh, who's 3-0 and on April 6th. Uh, when you got this name, what were you sort of thinking? Happy days. Happy days. I mean, that's he's perfect for me. Absolutely perfect. Big juice head, big steroid head, coming with a big overhand, right? And bounce it up and down like a jack-in-the-box, I don't know. But what's he going to do? What's he going to do whenever I'm standing in front of him and he's missing them big overhands and swinging, hitting mad air and he's starting to gas? Also, the last fight, he gave up. He wanted out of there after a wee knee to the face. And he was sitting going, oh, I oh, can't see. And he's switching eyes and stuff. Like, you know what I mean? You're an MMA fighter. You're supposed to, you know, fight. Like, what are you doing giving up because of that? Like, but if he wants to give up, he's on the wrong, he's on the right man because I'll make him, I'll make him quit. That's a fact. I'll give him a way out, no problem. Also, one thing we'll say is Italian fighters uh, against FAO <laughs> fighters is not the best win rate, I'd say. I would, I, I, I'd wait to find someone like Andy Hickey on Twitter to find me the last time that Italian beat someone from FAO. Not at all. No way. Not a, never they happened. They have been FAO's punching bags. Yes, Italians. 100%. Bring them over for I don't think it's going to change. Back. No, no chance. No chance. Spectacular finish is coming. Uh, Jordan, also, how active do you want to be on the Cage Warriors roster f- for the rest of the year as well? As active as I have to be to get that belt. I want that belt this year, maybe start it next year. Coming for it. Look, look, straight away. No, it's, this is this year. This is it. No more fucking about it. No more messing about it. It's, everything's happening this year. This is the year going to change my life. I'm coming for everything. Obviously, um, with yourself, um, like the middleweight division, um, there's a few veterans in there and stuff like that. Who do you think will be holding the belt come the time that you're fighting for it? God knows. And then they're all sort of just in the same sort of same sort of level, aren't they? Like there's nobody, like, there's nobody outstanding. They're just running through here, going, you're going, fuck, oh, he's definitely going to be the, be the champion. But it doesn't matter. Max Stanton and him, if he comes back or if he fights for the belt again, but I don't know. And him, doesn't really matter. It. It. it can all get it. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. And they're all on the team sort of level. Like there's no, as I say, there's nobody outstanding that you're sort of worried, like thinking, oh, do not want to run into this boy or whatever? Like every one of them can get it. Well, Ross, I Ross, uh, Ross, I'm, I'm loving this new attitude from from Jordan, but <laughs> here he stay, big man. Here he stay. Yeah. That, that, that what's called a jolly jumbo O'Neill. <laughs> that happy fighter is a dangerous fighter. I know, man. I, know, man. I, I don't know what's in the water in FAO, but uh, I think I need a few cups of it. And, uh, Just... Jordan, one thing I've always noticed with uh, your fights is uh, you have a massive uh, following. You have very loyal supporters who who support you through and through. Yeah. We, we expect uh, a large crowd of uh, the jumbo army come uh, April 6th. Damn right. Damn right. 100% making serious amount of noise as they always do. Play like hitters, not cases. <laughs> and uh, while I have you on here, I better give a shout out to uh, a good friend of yours, uh, Blaine McGill. Uh, yeah. I, I was uh, listening to FAO fighters last week. Uh, you know, I was saying how stacked they were, all the fighters they have in each division, or whatever. And uh, I didn't say his name. And I said, <laughs> and, uh, they get annoyed. So, uh, Blaine McGill, uh, uh, you're all right, I suppose. Decent barber. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Thought I'm bringing you know, barber and hand fighting. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. Wow, well, no, uh, lovely fella, and uh, I think uh, him and Loyway is going to be uh, so much more interesting this year. Yes, hundred percent. That's where it should be. Yeah, and then jo- Jordan, Jordan, but I, I, I just want to know as well. Bar your own fight on the card. Which other fight are you looking forward to seeing at Cage Warriors one seventy? Um. Obviously, my teammates, uh, Matthew's fighting on Matthew Elliott. I love to see the improvements he's made. Um, Scott Harvey is going to be is going to be one one to watch. Um, a real technician of the game, like he's he's so clued onto everything. Um, so I'm really excited for that one. And uh, just that's it. The teammates, really, that's all I care about. Like you know, what I mean, it's it's the team. 
come on in there, come out there with three ones. Yeah, and that's it. Uh, it's now the cards look at the cards getting more more and more stacked with more Irish fighters on as well. Like Ross, this card's not to be missed, is it? Like no, absolutely not, absolutely not. And like with Cage Warriors one seventy in Dublin, like uh, I think we're missing one or two fights. Uh, potentially a Paul Hughes fight on the card would be really really sexy. Maybe we need some big Maybe. news pretty soon, and uh, that'd be great. <laughs> and then um, oh, oh like uh, I suppose I'll, I'll just come out and say it. Uh, with Giannis Bakar uh, going to fight on the Ultimate Fighter along with uh, Paddy McCarry, another tough alumni, uh, Omran Shaban, which is great. Uh, James Sheen like is next to guaranteed to be fighting for some form of welterweight belt. Uh, come fight now, now if the if that championship yeah. is vacant, uh, Dublin yeah. needs main events. So send out the back signal, Paul Hughes, James Sheen for for the title. Let's see it. Definitely, hundred percent. I got 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 some good rounds in with James there. He was up at FAA. Um, got some good rounds in. So, uh, he's a gentleman of a fella. So, it's great. I'm I'm looking forward to his fight too. No, no, it's cool. It's, Whitehall massive. No, it's cool. It, it's cool to see James tra- training with each other. Like even the likes of King Cowley up with Reese as well. Um, it's just uh, it's great to see, especially being Irish MMA fans. But Jordan, just before we wrap things up, is there anything else you want to say to the people that are going to be tuning in to watch either in the arena? Or live on UC Fire Pass to watch you make your Cage Warriors debut at Cage Warriors 170 Dublin. Just sit back and enjoy it and realize you're know, all going to realize this is the start of it. And um, you're going to look at this ugly mug for a wee bit for, for a good while now. So, um, yeah, this is the start of it. Enjoy. Perfect. Well, Jordan, thanks very much for your time. And we'll let you get on with the rest of your day. But so, Ross, that was Jordan. All yeah. above board the Jumbo Express. Have you have, have you messaged him yet to get your own oil Oscar? Not yet, not yet. Man, I'm trying to trying to play cool, give him there. <laughs> <laughs> so people, so so for the people tuning in, thanks so much for staying on onto the show. Like uh, James, it was great to have James on and Jordan. Um, who do you think? Who would you rather go for a point of four star stout with Ross? Maybe James because uh, he he could avoid Connor. <laughs> Yeah, but Jumbo could bring a Pat and Shando, you know what I mean? That's Yeah, well, like it, it, only if Pat picks up in the Bentley. Yeah, man. Like, if Pat pays for the bill, then I'll go with Pat. Yeah. But, uh, Ross, we have, we have big fish to fry before the show is over. As I say, Absolutely. for the people tuning in, make sure to like and subscribe because we are here every week. Ross, UFC 299 went down over the weekend in Miami. Sean O'Malley, the sugar show in the pink shorts and, and that haircut as well. Uh, one by decision. Ross, what did you make of UC 299? For me, this is the best card of the year so far. Like It, it had it all. Um, obviously, Sean O'Malley topping off the card. Unbelievable performance. Like Won every round against Cheeto Vera. Like, really put a beating on him. Uh, I wasn't expecting it to be as one-sided as it was. Because like, I know Cheeto's got a lot of dog in him. And like he's never been knocked. He's never been knocked out. Or I don't think he's ever been knocked down in his UFC yeah. career. Like what's that 23, 24 fights? He's fought some like serious hard hitters. So uh look really, really impressive to see uh Marlon Vera's uh toughness. But uh Sean O'Malley, like I felt like that was a real coming out party. I know some people were like, Oh, he's fighting someone outside the top five, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But like this is someone who he who had previously beaten him before, not that he acknowledges that. And he went out there and put an exclamation mark on it and showed that he actually is a very, very high level fighter. Because I feel like people look at him. I don't give his skills the credit they deserve. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I think it's because of a uh, partially because of his look and the mm. way he sort of acts outside the the cage. Like the yeah. thing is, Sean O'Malley on the mic doesn't really blow you away. No, I, I think people think he's more charismatic than he is. If you yeah. can say that, yeah, but, but uh, like, it's his style <laughs> inside the cage and outside the cage that like br- dr- brings eyeballs and uh, getting that that the pink short treatment. I'm sure Ian Gary is going to be trying to get the purple shorts now soon because of that. I think Brendan Allen's actually wearing pur- purple shorts soon, but um, yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he was at all. Uh, interesting call out. I felt like he bottled the call out. I felt like he called out Deporia and then goes, huh, I suppose I'll fight Marab as well if they want. Uh, I felt like he should have stuck to his guns with the Tapora call out and went for all in. Yeah, because everyone knows that Sean doesn't like making that 135 pounds. And like obviously the next ten pounds, you you wonder how good he could be. But who would you like to see him fight next? Would you like to see him fight 
Ilya Tapuria for the featherweight title and become champ champ, or would you rather see him fight Murab to bash Philly? I think we like to see him fight Murab, to be honest. Uh, like, Murab's style is just, like, such a unique style. Um, that's what that's what I'd like to see. Although, like, I feel like Corey Sandhagen's also waiting in the wings there as well. I feel like stylistically, like, stand-up boys, that's an unbelievable fight as well. So, yeah, I feel like the Murab fight's going to be what's made next. Because it's funny, because Sean's calling it Taporia, but Taporia's sort of calling it Makachev. So, like, they're both looking above. I'd rather see the Taporia fight. But uh, that's the thing about MMA. There's like multiple things can happen. Uh, Ross, in the co-main event, Dustin Poirier defeated Benoit Saint Denis. Like, what a back and forth this fight was. Um, are you surprised Dustin got the win? And what did you make of the win? No, I, I actually sort of fancy Dustin for the win. I feel like he was a, he was a veteran. I feel like um, Saint Denis, like as good as he's been, I felt like he went too full throttle in the first round, and I felt like he was gassing in the second round. And I feel like Dustin's like a veteran. And like he paces himself so well, and he, he just times the shot so well. His boxing is so beautiful. And when he landed that left hook, like he absolutely folded him like a deck chair. It was an unbelievable finish. And look, Dustin Poirier, I feel like he was almost disrespected going to this fight. I felt like everyone was picking uh, Saint Denis against him. And I felt like people were almost writing him off that he was, he was old, he was past it. And uh, he's now being called out by Ali Abdulaziz to fight Makachev next. Uh, I know, uh, I know, it was off Makachev's Twitter, but I don't think Makachev uh, tweets that perfectly good English. So, uh, um, I, I, I look. This I don't really want to see Poirier versus Makachev next. Um, I'd like to see the winner of Gaethje versus Holloway versus Makachev next. But look, we'll see how it goes. So, you. So, what would you like to see Max Holloway do? Oh, sorry, excuse me. What would you like to see Dustin Poirier do next? I think maybe he fights the winner of Charles Oliveira and Sarukian. Okay, interesting. Not not a title shot next. Um, yeah, well, let's see. Let's let's keep an eye on Look, that. Like, uh, put it this way: the winner of Oliveira Sarukian, the winner of Gaethje versus Holloway or Justin Poirier, if they got a title shot next, like I'm not going to start coming on here ranting and raving like that's a disgrace. You know what all I mean? you like, do is all you do is rant and raving this show, mate. Yeah, <laughs> Ross's rants. Ross's Rats, bring back that segment, man. That was my favorite yeah. segment. Um, <laughs> Ross, MVP made his UFC debut at the young age of 36. What did you make of the performance? And what did you make of the walkout? Yeah, The Undertaker. Uh, yeah. Th- that was uh, that was wild. I think that's obviously uh, now that they have WWE and UFC under the TKO banner. I think that's more uh, possible to do. Although, correct me wrong, does Adesanya not do that as well? I won't say he sort of had, yeah, but like, like sort of half dance, just, yeah, sort of like break dance. But, um, look, um, great performance. Like, as Dana White said, uh, Kevin Holland finally met a fighter who was cockier than he was. Uh, I thought, I thought it was a very good performance. Thought he handled himself very, very well. And look, he's firing himself right in this upper echelon to the welterweight division. Um, I think he's a sublime talent, and I think. It's time to make the fight that the fans wanted to see. Uh, we actually interviewed both these guys down in Cork, and I want to see MVP versus Wonderboy Thompson next. That's the fight I want to see. I want to see those two throw down. Uh, I think that's a, fi- a fans uh, a fight that fans would love to see. And I want to see a main event a uh, fight night. I want to see it over five rounds. I'd like to see... Uh, MVP take on Ian Gary in the, at UC Dublin, the main event. I'd be here for that as well. Uh, I think it would be funny because MVP has actually ma- uh, uh, fought in Dublin more times than Ian Gary has. Um, I'd be here for that as well. If they want to go down that route, I'm, I'm definitely here for it. But uh, I don't know. I feel like he needs to get a win over a ranked opponent before he, he starts talking to Ian Gary. Yeah, well, I think Kevin Holland was ranked 13. Was he? Oh, I wasn't too sure whether he was yeah. still ranked or not. But uh, yeah, I think uh, let's see him. Let's see him fight uh, someone slightly higher because I feel like Ian's earned to fight someone above him. If that makes sense at this stage. Yeah, well, well, it's more. But Styles make fights like style wise is incredible. Yeah, well, like Ian sort of need like MVP would probably be the biggest name Ian's fought, and then uh, like that that'll be a stand up fight, you know? Like Ian won't take that to the ground. I think it'd just be a good fight. Both are great options. Yeah. That, that look, options are always good in the game. Yeah. Um. Ross, another fight I have to talk to you about is Gilbert Burns losing to Jack Della Maddalena. 
Um, what did you make of Jack's performance overall? And do you think Gilbert Burns is sort of is just out of the title title um, narrative now? I think he is for the time being, but I don't think he can't get back there. Like like I had him two rounds up before he got finished in the third. So like I think um, Jack Della Maddalena, I think like he still has a few holes in this game. I think you know Gil Burns is a tough nut to crack. He's a hard fight for anyone. Um, but I think Della Maddalena is in in around that territory of where MVP is. He's sort of looking to fight someone with more name recognition than he has. I think he's looking for a signature win. And I love seeing him in there uh, again. Well, he was actually called out by Shavkat. So, like, I, why not make that fight if Shavkat is willing to fight him and fight down the Rangans? Like, that's that's a great fight for both of them. Yeah, because no one else is calling out Shavkat's name as well. That will be a good fight. Um, just to, There's a lot of stuff to catch up on here, so I'm just going to give a qu- quick few shout-outs as well. Uh, Shout-out to Peter Jan getting the win over the weekend, as well as Curtis Blades, uh, Macy Barber, Matthias Gamrot, and um, also just one person to watch out for as well, uh, Robles Despagni. He's like six foot seven heavyweight. This guy is like I think the longest longest reach in the UFC. He is one to watch. And then uh, Ross's favorite Scottish fighter, Joanne Call uh, Joanne Wood, formerly Calderwood. And uh, Ross, this weekend UFC fight night goes down. It's Marcin Tabura versus Tai Tu Avasa. You're gonna have to make the pick this week because last week I got it right picking the Sugar Show. Who are you going with this weekend? I'm going to go with Marcin Tabora. I think uh, no loyalty to Bam Bam, unfortunately. But uh, I feel like Tabora is better over the five rounds. Also, uh, like you said, my favorite Scottish fighter, uh, Joanne Wood. Shout out to her because uh, I think she hung up the gloves there um, on Saturday night. So uh, shout out to her. She was a trailblazer for women's MMA in Scotland. Yeah. Hi. Um, Ross. That's sort of wrapping up the UFC news. Also, it was we have covered the fact that the Ultimate Fighter is coming back June fourth, and there is going to be FAI's Paddy McCurry on it, uh, Team KF's Armand Shaban, and then also for next gen MMA Liverpool's Nathan Fletcher are going to be on the card as well. So it's going to be one to watch. Uh, the coaches are going to be Valentina Shashenko and Alexa Grasso. Um, Ross, we have to discuss a few other things before we wrap things up. Um, AJ. Defeat of Francis and Ganyu of on Friday night via KO. What did you make of that KO, bud? I thought the KO itself was absolutely vicious. Uh, like I said beforehand, I feel like AJ was going to win handy. I felt like he'd be able to watch the Fury fight, pick the holes in Ngannou's game, and wean them out quite quickly. I think he did that. I think he did that really successfully. And I think, like I said, the narrative has changed now. I think more people favor Anthony Joshua in a fight over Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury was very quick to say he has two fights booked in against Usyk and that that Joshua fight won't happen anytime soon. Um, I hope that we see Fury versus AJ before uh, Usyk Fury rematch, regardless of what the outcome is. That's the fight I want to see. Even if Fury lost Usyk, I want to see Fury versus AJ. That's the fight people want to see. For years now, that's the fight people want to see. Are you sure people aren't dying to see Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson more in the summer? Yeah, um, look, that's obviously an interesting one. Um, do I have interest in the fight itself? Not really. Will I watch it? Yeah, I will. I'm interested to see how Netflix does on str- like a live stream sporting event. Uh, I'm pretty sure I didn't actually watch it live, but I'm pretty sure they actually did Rafael Naval versus Alcacer in a tennis match on, on live on Netflix. So uh, it'd be interesting seeing Netflix get into the live sporting space. I actually think Raw, WWE Raw, is from 2025, is going to air live on Netflix as well. So they're getting into the sporting space. Netflix obviously has a massive budget, and uh, they can afford to get these things in. So it'll be very interesting to see. And I'm sure, you know, when UFC's deals come up in the future, like maybe that's something that they'll look at um to be on netflix or maybe it's something that pfl could look at and like that could be a way of really growing their their stock yeah well i'm sure pfl are definitely gonna have eyes on this because like just talking about that francis and ganu is gonna fight uh will jay paul ever make his mma debut on pfl but uh pfl paris went down on thursday night um 
Irish Warriors were all watching to see how Andreas Binder get on. But unfortunately, he missed weight, so he was off the card. That's twice now in a row he's missed weight. He's announced he's going to move up to welterweight, so it'll be interesting to see where he goes there. Uh, shout out to Daniele Scatizzi, who got the win at PFL Paris as well. And Ross, the main event was stopped by Glass being in Cedric Dumbay's foot. What? I think it was a splinter. I think it was like a piece of wood. <laughs> who was who was dropping wood in the <laughs> in the cage, Ross? Call them out quick. Yeah, it's just uh, like a disastrous end to what looked to be an unbelievable event for PFL. Um, obviously, uh, Doombay is the biggest star that they have uh, in the European scene. You know, 16,000 people in the arena. Uh, great to see. Like, it's, it's a market that they have a real stronghold in. They uh, they hold that market really, really well. Uh, like, it seems to be, Doombay seems to be such a star for them. And uh, really unfortunate that's the way the fight ended for them. Uh, also, that guy who, like, had his hands down, don't know his name was, heavyweight, like, that was yeah. bizarre. I felt like that wasn't a good... I feel like the way the main event ended, and the guy with the hands down wasn't a good look for <laughs> PFL Europe. And I feel like, unfortunately, they're the two talking points. They're the two viral clips coming out of the show. Yeah. But uh, we'll see what happens next with PFL. Uh, Ross, over the weekend on Sunday in Belfast, Clam Wars 49 went down. Matthew Friel won in the main event on, in his pro debut. What did you make of Matthew Friel's win? And what did you make of the event overall? Yeah, he got the uh, first round submission win. Like, obviously, he uh, he's someone who looks like the transition to pro was quite seamless for him. I think he had about 20 amateur fights um, going into it. Um, he was the more experienced and had the better record going in against um, McAleese. Um, I sort of expected Friel to win. It would have been quite a large upset if he didn't. And look, great to have another uh, flyweight in the ranks. It would be interesting to see what way he will guide his pro career. But, um, yeah, Clam Wars put on a really, really good show. Uh, Emma Core had a really good win uh, against Damien McKenna. That looked really, really impressive as well. And, um, yeah, I, th- I thought it was um, a good show from Clam Wars. They, they seem to run a really professional show up there. Um, and, look, Irish MMA is booming. Uh, Matthew Friel has joined the pro rank, so fair play to him. Yeah, shout out to Emma Core winning the title. Billy Sutherland, uh, Peter Halpenny, and Paul Nolan, and obviously Dean McGuire, the new Clam Wars champs walking around the belt. I say they're still wearing them belts walking around Belfast today, but um, sure, oh, that's what we'd be doing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Ross, just looking at this week, before we get into the end of questions, which is everyone's favorite segment, um, this week, Cage Warriors Unplugged goes down. Cage, War- Cage Warriors 167. That's going down Friday night live in UFC Fight Pass. Cage Fight Series is also on Friday. Callum Walsh, the king, takes over MSG on Friday as well. Then there's actually a Warrior th- Warriors Muay Thai event on Friday night as well. King Cowley. Then uh, Saturday, Cage Warriors 168 in Manchester. Stacked card with Next Gen. Uh, the main event is Andy Clamp versus Matty Boyfield. And in the co-main event, it, Liam Gittens is fighting... Who's he fighting? Oh, I couldn't tell you at this stage. I think he's... Uh, is he fighting one of the American fellas, is he? Or, I, think, yeah, I think he actually... Yeah, I think he actually is, actually, yeah. And then... Brad Ward would be absolutely slating us now. Oh, man, Brad Ward, like... Just, like, he's, he's throwing them energized glasses. I read the me. press release. Hold on, let, let, me, let, me, <laughs> let me see if I can uh, pull up here. He is fighting Roberto Hernandez. That's what he's fighting. Okay. He's fighting one day yeah, then, um, yeah, then also some more Irish faces are fighting this weekend. A fight who won D Begley from SPG Ireland and also Jack McGuire from MMA Cork. Two Cork Onions, Ross. And then shout out to Elias Boulay fighting on the card as well. Ireland's own. What a legend. Yeah, you're Cork. And then, and then uh, Thomas Carty is actually fighting this weekend as well. And so is Pierce O'Leary in boxing. And shout out to Emma Brennan who won over America last week on Thursday. So uh, the Irish Irish will be watching all the action this week and the St. Patrick's Day on Sunday. But uh, Baz, you get a job as new uh, sports news geez, uh, geez. reporter there. Reading it's all news. news, is it? Fucking hell. Um, <laughs> Ross, I'm going to have to get into Enjoy's questions, but also shout out to all the mums who had it. It was Mother's Day yesterday. And uh, yeah, look after them while they're here. But Ross, Absolutely. I'm going to have to get into Enjoy's questions. Is, is there anything else you want to say before I get into these bad boys? Now, shout out to all the mass. You up the mass. 
<laughs> you up to mass. Ross, right? We just found out. Here's the end of Joe's questions, right? I'm going to start off with this one. We just found out Spear in Detail, who's, who's been getting on to us every week, is actually Jordan O'Neill's brother. So shout out to Spear in Detail. Kept that de- those details very quiet, didn't he? Yeah, um, very close to the chest, that one. Oh, man. Says nothing. Um, he actually writes two questions here. First one is, is Graham Boyle and Troy to re- replicate Dana with no main event news too late as possible for Cage Warriors double? No, I, I think uh, we'll probably see that main event announced quite soon. I think what was happening was, obviously, we're waiting on that Tough 32 announcement. Giannis Bakar is in Tough now. Uh, I think, obviously, they'll have to make sure he gets there and qualifies for the show. And I think we'll see... James Sheehan either fight for an interim title, a Cage Warriors Dublin, or for the world in undisputed world title. I think um, he's well well deserved it, and I don't know who he's going to be fighting on the night. I think that's what we're going to see, and I think we're also waiting to see if we can get Paul Hughes. He has one fight left in his contract, and let's see if we can get Paul Hughes in and fighting in Dublin at lightweight. I think there's a few people who don't want don't want the smoke. Yeah. Who, who'd want that smoke in fairness? Uh, then also, Spear in Detail asks as well, on a serious note, Jesus, he's, he wasn't serious there, no? Uh, thoughts on Doom Bay stoppage? I think Mark G was correct. Up back. Uh, up back-y. Uh, yeah, obviously, you know, Doom Bay asked for this fight to be stopped to get the splinter out of his toe. Goddard said no, and then he was like, no, but we need to stop it. And then he, uh, basically, in referee language, that means Doom Bay is refusing the fight. And if he's refusing the fight, well then, the other person wins. Basically, might as well tapped out effectively. So, got it. Mark, got it. Mark Goddard should have went down and bit the splinter out with his teeth. Uh, yeah. Ross, Goddard, uh, I was entertained by how animated he was over the whole thing. As uh, also, I wonder was maybe there's slight language barrier as well. So who knows? But uh, look, whenever I see Goddard do something that you automatically go, "Geez, that doesn't look right." It more than likely is right. He knows what he's doing. He do, yeah, it's not his yeah. first rodeo. Um, also, Emma Core, the Clan Wars champion, goes, where's my energized glasses? Oh. <laughs> Next time we see you, board, we'll have a pair for you. Uh, unbelievable win. Um, can't wait to see see, see uh, what you do this year. And I can't wait to see you make a transition to the pro scene. I'm sure that won't be too far down the line. Yeah. You up the yeah. cores. You up Danny Core. You up Emma Core. You up Jack Core. You up the cores. Way better than the, the single band. <laughs> Shout out the chorus as well. Um, Al Colosi asks, when will the Android show do a live show in San Diego and see your friend Al? I didn't know we had friends called Al in San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> Energy is on tour. I don't know if San Diego would be the first uh, first pit stop, but uh, we'll make it happen. We'll do. Uh, we'd have to do a live show up in uh, up in Foyle Academy Ireland with uh, Pat and Chanda was the guest first. Yeah, we have to do a live show in Belfast first, but uh, it's going to happen someday. We'll just see if we can uh, get more money off the Ford's Irish Stout to go over and do a live gig. Um, Adam Hawkins underscore 14 asks, is Michael Shields the best amateur featherweight in the country? And also Dominic Dornan asks, is Michael Shields the best featherweight in the country at the moment? A few Michael Shields fans here in the house. I'm one myself. Um, look, I think it's uh, one of those ones where a lot of the featherweights last year, like your Tiernan Lochran, your Lewis Burns, your Craig McGrattans, have all sort of gone pro. So the featherweight sort of uh, scene is a bit more um, up for grabs. Did Emma Core fight a featherweight there against um, Damon McKenna? I think he did. I think uh, I, I definitely love to see that fight. Uh, Emma Core versus uh, Michael Shields. He's definitely up there. Like his, his ceiling is extraordinarily high. He could be, but I think we might need to see a few more, um, f- a few more fights out. Him. Like I think, as far as I'm aware, he, I think he's only 18, Michael Shields. And uh, I know the FII lads speak really, really highly of him. So he, he definitely has the potential to be there. But uh, I don't know if he's there just yet. So we'll uh, we'll, we'll definitely see. Uh, I'm sure he'd uh, love to get a rematch in against. Uh, Jeb Paolo, he he lost a split decision there to him on cage conflict. So I think I think he has a bit of work to do on, to be done to be like oh, I'm definitely the best and like it to be no doubt about it. But um, look, he, he's definitely making some waves. I'm, I'm I'm trying to think off the top of my head like who are the the top featherweights in the country at the moment. Um, 
to see whether I'm like yay or nay. Like obviously Keith Kyo hasn't turned pro yet, so like I would say Keith Kyo is the top featherweight pro. And neither is Tyrion Locker and he hasn't turned pro either. So like those two are still the best if you if you want to talk about people who haven't actually made their pro debut or their pro debuts aren't stated as of yet, if you want to put it that way. What do you think, Baz? Well like obviously Keith Kyo is still waiting for is still waiting to fight pro and Tyrion mm. as well. So until they actually fight pro, I see them as ahead of them, uh, Michael Shields. But look, like the cream always rises to the top. So like we will find out in the, in the not so distant future. Uh, Ross Eric OD ninety six shout out Eric goes. What do you think is next for Dustin Poirier? We sort of covered this, but uh, do you want to just jump in there? Yeah. Um... Look, like like we said, he, he could fight anywhere. He could fight the winner of Oliveira Sarukin. He could fight the winner of Gagey Holloway. He could fight Islam Makachev next. I think there are his four or three options that he has. Uh, and I think fans would be very interested in, in all of them, uh, to be honest. So, yeah, let's let's see it. Or, like, I always think, like, there are, is always the possibility of him getting to settle that beef and having a grudge matchup at 170, Dustin Poirier versus Colby Covington. Yeah, he could potentially fight the winner of uh, McGregor versus Chandler as well. But look, there's loads yeah, of options absolutely. there. We need that fight to get booked first. <laughs> yeah, true, yeah. Uh, DH Newman sent a couple of questions in as well, Ross, right? so on, Love the so question, that guy. Yeah, so I'm going to start off with thoughts on the tough lineup. I think I think, I think think it's great. I think it's great to see so much European talent. I think, uh, yeah. obviously, the Irish interest with Omran Chaban and uh, Paddy McCurry is phenomenal. And I think uh, having Nathan Fletcher in there for next gen uh, adds that uh, great European element to it. And then obviously Giannis Bakar is there as well. So uh, look, I'm absolutely here for it. I-, I like to see tough spread across sort of the globe as opposed to just having 12 Americans versus t- another 12 Americans. It doesn't really do much for me. Yeah. Well, it was good the way Connor was coaching last year and you had uh, Lee yeah. Hammond on it and you had uh, Bracatone on it as well. So it makes it more enjoyable for us. Uh, unfortunately, we won't be able to get Omran or uh, Paddy on in the yeah, until, until, until they're actually finished. finished. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the thing. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, then, Ross, just two more questions from DH Newman. Um, who is most likely from Ireland to medal at the IMAFs next month? Yeah, I, I think I'm not a thousand percent sure of the squad, because uh, I know we were talking to Keith Kyo before, and he was saying he wanted to do another IMA event. Yeah. So, we actually reached out to IMA and asked for the squads. I don't know if they actually... Am I gone? Did I disappear? No, you're gone. Yeah, I'll, I'll reach out to IMA for the squads. Uh, I think IMA are dropping the ball a bit here, if I'm being honest, that they're not really releasing on socials who's in the squad because sometimes people like you're given a squad and then like a week or two later someone's injured and someone has to step in. Uh we're not being really released the squads. Uh well they're not passed on to us, maybe they're passed on to other media outlets. Uh and then like I don't know what the exact dates of the tournament are either. I feel like uh the the updates on their end have been quite poor to be honest. Um but it is maybe something we'll look into. A- ask us next week and uh maybe we'll give you an answer when they get back to us. If they get back to us. If they get back to us. Yeah. Also, shout out to Clamors for being so hospitable, hospitable towards us. Uh, Christine doing a fantastic job as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, Ross, then I have one last question for you. Um, sorry, I had to jump out of it for a sec there just to see if I might go back to us. Obviously, didn't. What a shame. Um, here we go. This one is a bit juicy now, Ross. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. Here we go. Last question from DH Newman. Why aren't Invicta giving Danny Mac any fights? That is a great question. Yeah, that's an absolutely phenomenal question. I see. I don't know how many times a champion has to ask for promotion to get a fight yeah. booked. Danny McCormick needs to get booked on Invicta absolutely ASAP. She should be in the UFC already. Um, like we saw her absolutely smash Machado out of it, and then Machado was all over UFC fight pass the socials. Um, absolutely hammering some poor girl home. Danny McCormick ate all those shots and came back and won. Uh, she is an absolute phenomenal athlete. She is someone who needs to be signed to the UFC. She is that level. She is that caliber. Uh, Shannon Knapp sorted out or make the phone calls you have to make. Get her into the UFC 
and get her a fight there because that's where she deserves to be. That's the level she is at. Amen, baby. Shout out to Danny McCormick. Uh, Ross, next week, Bellator Belfast is going down. Cage Legacy 21 has gone down to Mead. And there's other UFC stuff going down as well. So for people tuning in now, you're going to have to make sure to like and subscribe and come back next week because uh, there's going to be big guests coming on next week as well. That's what we do every week, Ross. Do the energy show. Like, you swear we didn't do anything else, Bardis. We make it easy, bro. That's all we do. Make it look easy. Make it look easy. Ross, that was a great show. In fairness, um, I enjoyed the sure look, man. The best, best Irish MMA podcast in Ireland. Doesn't get much better than this. We give you the content every week. And on Instagram, bro. And sometimes yeah. you do a few dances on TikTok. But, uh, Ross, I'm just going to recap the show. It's great to have James on. Like, how many exclusives did he announce in this? They're going to go viral, and no one's going to reference the two lads having them on the show. Then, Jordan Neal. The, the man the man on the ayahuasca trip. Like, can't wait. Did you send him those DMs yet? No? Quick. Yeah, it's sent. Oh, good man, good man. Then, <laughs> then covering UFC 299. Ross, if you ask me, that that's that's what an MMA show is all about, if you ask me, bro. Absolutely. Look, bud. Electric stuff from us, as always. You can't beat it. Um, if you want to support us and have us continue to bring you such amazing content, make sure to like, share, subscribe. And as always... Stay Stay energized. Energize shot up the Irish. Been sussing you guys a couple of times. I've seen a couple of clips. I think you've done some interviews with Dylan Moran and that. But I, I, I saw. So keep going. Keep up the good work, guys.